We'll now sing the first stanza of our national anthem. Honorable Ruth Oscarit, Prime Minister. The Honorable Ruth Oscarit, Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica and Minister for Finance, Economic Affairs, Investment, Planning, Resilience, Sustainable Development, Telecommunications and Broadcasting. The Honorable Dennis Charles, Minister for Tourism, International Transport, Maritime Initiatives, and Parliament Representative for the Sufre Constituency. The Honorable Ian Douglas, Minister for Trade, Commerce, Entrepreneurship, Innovation, Business, and Export Development of Dominica. Professor Cardinal Ward of MIT. Mrs. Kim Osborne, Executive Secretary, for the Executive Secretariat for Integral Development of the Organization of American States. Mr. Stephen Lander, President of Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce. Cabinet Ministers, Mr. Steve Farrell, the Cabinet Secretary. Permanent Secretary, Ms. Miss, Miss Missy Henderson, Office of the Prime Minister. Permanent Secretary, Mrs. Esther Summers, Ministry of Trade, Commerce, Entrepreneurship, Innovation, Business and Export Development of Dominica. Mrs. Valmo, Lisa Valmo, Minister for Tourism, Interna International Transport and Maritime Initiative. Other permanent secretaries, the Board of Directors of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce and the staff of the Office of the Prime Minister. Sponsors, Jungle Bay, Saul EC Limited, CIBC First Caribbean, and FSI Creative. Special invited guests, including Ambassador Francine Barron and Ambassador, Ambassador Steve. Entrepreneurs, media partners, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the official launch of the Dominica Entrepreneurship and Innovation Hub. At this time, we'll invite Mr. Danny Joseph, the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Officer, to lead us in prayer. We invite everyone to stand for prayer. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Please join me as we go before our Father. O oh, great and merciful God, Ruler of all that we see, King of all that we know. For Lord, you are good in every way. You are good in everything. Father, we thank you this morning for we did not get up on our own. We thank you this morning for through your will and purpose, you have led each and every one of us here this morning to be a part of this wonderful initiative for Dominica. Father, for you are good and mighty. 
Even when we are faced with challenges, you continue to bless Dominica. So we have no choice but to worship you, Father. We have no choice but to exalt your name of high. For you are truly a mighty God. For there was nothing, there is nothing that we have that you did not give us. And there is nothing that we will acquire that you did not allow us to have. So God, great and mighty man, Father, we worship you. We honor you. We lift your name up high. For you are truly worthy to be praised. Father, I lift up everyone here before you. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. I pray that every partner, every participant, will execute their duties with excellence so that we may give glory to your name, Father. I pray that you are here with us. I pray that your Holy Spirit comes down and dwells with us, Father. Guide us, Lord. Let this initiative bring glory to your name. Have your way, Father. Father, I come against all the plans of the enemy to sabotage, disrupt, or create any situation less than perfect and excellent here today. You shall not have your way, Satan, for this initiative was blessed by God himself. So, Father, we continue to give you praise, honor, <coughs> for you are truly worthy of all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. Would also like to recognize Mrs. Skerritt, the wife of the Prime Minister, Senior Minister, Honorable Reginald Austrey, and also Ambassador Felix Gregoire. We welcome you to this grand opening ceremony of the launch of the Dominica Entrepreneurship and Innovation Hub. The partners who have collaborated in this process are certainly delighted that this initiative is finally a reality. The partners are the Office of the Prime Minister and the Ministry of Entrepreneurship Innovation of Dominica, the Organization of American States, and the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce. This has been curated and specially designed for young entrepreneurs in Dominica to be able to develop the tools and the knowledge and skills needed for building resilient and innovative businesses. This morning we have 33 young entrepreneurs who have been selected across different communities and different sectors to be here gathered at Jungle Bay for this launch of the Dominica Entrepreneurship and Innovation Hub, as well as the on-site workshop. We are also pleased that our partners have joined us for this grand opening. And at this time, we will invite the Honorable Dennis Charles, Minister for Tourism, International Transport, and Maritime Initiative, and the Parliament Representative for the Sufre Constituency to give us welcome remarks. Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica, and his wife, Honorable Melissa Skerritt, Minister, Honorable Reginald of Austria, Minister of Trade, Commerce, Entrepreneurship, Innovation, Honorable Ian Douglas, other cabinet colleagues, Professor Cardinal Wade, Mrs. Kim Osborne, Mr. Stephen Land, the President of the AIC.
to a lucky entrepreneur. The entrepreneurship spirit in Dominica is alive and thriving. So I welcome you to the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Hub kickoff and encourage you to fully embrace this opportunity. I know that all of you want to be successful, but allow me to share a famous quote. Therefore, on that journey, one may experience failures, disappointments, or challenges. But if you believe and persevere, you shall achieve greatness. This also reminds me of the story of David and Goliath. T.D. Jakes puts it so well, great people do little things with excellence. Great people do little things with excellence. All David had in his pocket And we all know the end of that story. This week, you will be given tools to further expand, grow, or enhance your business. It doesn't matter at what stage you are today. If you believe in yourself and aim for excellence, you shall succeed. Because what you believe in will always overcome what you see. T.D. Jakes. And if you want some local examples of overcomers, speak to Dave Michel of Bubble Beach Spa, who had to rebuild his business after Hurricane Maria. And Sam Raphael. positive impact in Sufre and the tourism product of Dominica. I saw several flavors of Bubbles Beach Spa ice cream at Wichert and several other local supermarkets. COVID-19 has made us more aware of the importance of supporting local. We absolutely need local production and local ideas in order to fill the gap from dependence on our usual avenues of revenue. Our country can be transformed. Things right. We have to do things according to internationally accepted standards. We have to ensure that our products are desired at a glance. Packaging is key. This is why your government, led by our visionary, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, a local entrepreneur and farmer, by the way, has a great agro-tourism product, is so involved in this event. This is why your entrepreneurs, why you entrepreneurs, should grasp this opportunity in order to grow beyond the assistance of central government towards independence, profit maximization, and job creation. Like a child under their parents' wing who grows up to pay the bills and to even enhance their parents' lives or their siblings, so too, governments need entrepreneurs to grow and succeed, to contribute to national development and to help with the load. So, Take this hub as the launch of the next stage of your development. I want to also thank the OS for being a strong and committed partner and for ensuring with the leadership and patronage of the Prime Minister that Dominica becomes the first English-speaking entrepreneurship and innovation hub in the Caribbean. I also want to thank the IC and its executive for giving positive support to the development of new entrepreneurs. 
And again, I am extremely proud that this is all coming together in Sufre, the tourism mecca of Dominica. I welcome you and I'm extremely pleased that for an entire week, the eyes of so many will be on you in this tiny slice of paradise. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Dennis Charles. At this time, we would like to invite Mr. Stephen Lander, the president of the Dominica Association of Industrial and Commerce, to give us remarks. The Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica, Minister for Finance, Economic Affairs, Investments, Planning, Resilience, Sustainable Development, Telecommunications, and Broadcasting. Honorable Dennis Charles, Minister for Tourism, International Transport, and Maritime in Initiatives, and Parliamentary Representatives for the Sufre Constituency. Honorable Ian Douglas, Minister for Trade, Commerce, Entrepreneurship, Innovation, Business, and Export Development of Dominica. Professor Cardinal Wade of MIT. Uh, Ms. Kim Osborne, Executive Secretary of the uh, Integral Development, uh, Secretary for Integral Development Organization of American States. Cabinet Ministers, uh, Mr. Steve Farrell, Cabinet Secretary. Permanent Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister, Missy Henderson. Permanent Secretary, Ms. Esther Thomas, Ministry of Trade, Commerce, Entrepreneurship, Innovation, Business and Export Development of Dominica. Permanent Secretary of Tourism, Ms. Lisa Varma. Uh, other Permanent Secretaries, uh, other Ministers of Government and Members of Cabinet. To our sponsors, uh, Jungle Bay, Saul, First Caribbean, FSI Creative, special invited guests, entrepreneurs, media partners, and all of you ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's indeed a, a delight for us to be here today to engage with you, the young entrepreneurs of Dominica as we look forward to supporting enterprise and economic growth in the country. Uh, I want to start up front by acknowledging the, the support of the OAS and the Office of the Prime Minister in actually getting this initiative done. There was no hesitation on either part to actually participate and support to the fullest once the idea was fielded. Uh, to give some context, one of the challenges that we put forward to ourselves as an executive at the chamber is how we could deliver more tangible value to our, our partners, our members, and the wider business, business community in Dominica moving forward. By giving them skills, by giving them tools that they could go back to their businesses and use to support their growth as they move forward. This is what the entre Entrepreneurship Hub is all about. And as young entrepreneurs and newly starting ones, we understand that you face challenges around cash flow, management and budgeting, around marketing, around navigating the changes that are coming with the dig digital, um, digital environment that we're, we're, we're in right now. I want to ensure that you have the tools to be successful and to, to navigate those waters successfully. But as I thought about what the true value of this entrepreneurship hub would be, I reflected on some advice given by Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson is the, is the founder of Black Entertainment Television, BET. I went asked what advice he would give to young entrepreneurs. He said, make your friends before you need them. It's a bit of a funny statement, but what he was talking about was networking, right? And the thing about business is, and I'm sure you've realized, everything is so dynamic. And things will change day to day and you will need to respond. And one of the, the key things that you can have is a strong network with which, within which you can tap certain resources to help to respond to the, 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 the challenges that you face on a day to day basis. So what I want for the entrepreneurs to think about as you go through this week, as you interact with professionals, and you come in contact with them, think of, the, think of it not as a single point of contact, just in this workshop, 
but as a source of ongoing support as we leave here and you go back to your businesses and you move forward. So when you have a challenge, I mean, you're talking finance, you speak to your finance uh, uh, network. You have a challenge with IT, you speak to your, your IT network. You have a challenge with marketing and so on. So this is going to be a source of knowledge, a source of experience uh, that you can, that, that resource pool that you can tap anytime that you face a challenge as a young entrepreneur. That is the thing that I want you to leave here with. Um, it's the most valuable thing that you can take away. All right, so thanks everyone for, for helping us put this thing together. Thanks to the participants. We look forward to a great week with you. And I'm sure that you will find the presentations, the content, and again, the network extremely valuable. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Stephen Langdon. At this time, we'd like to invite Mrs. Kim Osborne, the Executive Secretary in the Executive Secretariat for Integral Development of the Organization of American States to address us at this time. We'll be viewing this remark from the PowerPoint, from the screen right here, so this will be a good little presentation. Executive Secretary in the Executive Secretariat for Integral Development of the Organization of American States. Good morning, Honorable Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica and Mrs. Skerritt, members of the Cabinet of Ministers of Dominica, Permanent Secretaries, Ambassador Barron, Mr. Stephen Lander, President of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce, Mr. Cardinal Ward, keynote speaker and professor at MIT and Executive Director of the Caribbean Science Foundation, Ms. Lizra Fabian, Executive Director of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce, Distinguished Resource Persons of the Dominica Entrepreneurship and Innovation Hub, participants, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. In his tragedy, Macbeth, Shakespeare, meaning that all faces do not reveal our thoughts. I would say also that all faces do not reveal our hearts, because if you could see my heart right now, you will see it swollen with pride and excitement at the transformational significance of what we are embarking upon today. The challenges that confront Dominica and the rest of the Caribbean are truly unprecedented in their scope and impact. Every metric of development has been negatively impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, whether it be employment, national income, foreign exchange, productivity, exports, business continuity, and supply chains. All governments are struggling to contain the spread of the virus while providing lifelines for businesses, workers, and the vulnerable. The pandemic has hit at a time when our region had not yet recovered from the 2009 financial crisis. And for countries like Dominica, the Bahamas, and Antigua and Barbuda, that were already knee deep in debt debt from the ravages of Marie, hurricanes Maria and Dorian, the additional burdens created by the pandemic are nothing short of an assault on the aspirations and spirits of our people. But time and again, the people of the Caribbean have shown that their spirit is not easily dented. Dominica rose to its feet after it was ravaged by Maria and declared its determination to become the world's first resilient country. And today, amidst its ongoing struggle with the pandemic, it rises again to pursue a truly groundbreaking initiative. The first, it reminds us of the old adage that experience is not what happens to a people, but what they do happens to them. In a nutshell, this is what resilience is all about. It is about using the lessons from a bad experience 
to inform actions that make you stronger and wiser. When we at the OAS reflected on Dominica's experience with Hurricane Maria and preceding disasters and considered what we might do that could make a lasting transformational contribution to the attainment of the country's resilience goals, it became clear to us that the best way forward was to work with the inherent strengths of Dominica and Dominicans. We saw clear forward and backward linkages between the vitality, verve, creativity, and agile intellect of Dominicans and the nasty, including its fertile lands, its agrarian culture, its diverse ecosystem, and its well-established network of homegrown small-scale in Our preliminary analysis lit would be to invest in developing an entrepreneurial culture in Dominica. Following an exercise a few weeks ago in which we interviewed over 50 young people from across the Caribbean for participation in an innovation and entrepreneurship certificate course with a Chilean based university, we became even more convinced that we had made the right decision. The panel of experts who interviewed the participants from Dominica were deeply impressed, not only by the soundness of their business proposal, but also by the commitment and focus they displayed during their presentations. To be clear, entrepreneurs are a rare breed. Not every business person has what it takes to be an entrepreneur, but an entrepreneur requires specific Being an successful entrepreneurs are those that are capable of innovating ideas, putting them into action, and persevering through challenges. Successful entrepreneurs are creative, passionate, persuasive, self-confident, and highly motivated to succeed. The reality is that not all successful entrepreneurs had all these essential characteristics at the start of their careers. Some of the characteristics I mentioned come naturally to certain people. However, there are certain skills and characteristics that must be cultivated through training and practice, such as enhanced knowledge or a product or, of a product or service, networking, goal setting, money management, and marketing. These are some of the areas that we will focus on in the training that will be imparted during this week. By the end of this week, budding entrepreneurs will be exposed to success stories and lessons learned from entrepreneurs and institutions from across the Americas, including on modalities regarding the use of intellectual property, design and implementation of technology-based business models, valuation and profitability analysis of products and services, marketing strategies and tools, and regional and global value chains. In addition, they will receive clear insights into what's involved in moving products and services and ideas to market and adding value to them. At a broader outcome level, the intention is that this training will create the foundation for linking entrepreneurs from Dominica with experts and mentors from across the Americas in business management, financing, digitalization, knowledge transfer, and commercialization in order to expand the strategic regional collaboration. And finally, entrepreneurs will be assisted in devising strategies to build the resilience of their businesses to external shocks, such as natural and biological disasters. The evidence from countries with vibrant entrepreneurial cultures, such as Asia, Europe, North and South America, reveals the existence of a culture of partnership between government, the private sector, commercial and development banks, academia, researchers, and scientists. We believe that this is critical enough to warrant a follow-up activity targeting these actors to ensure that a supportive architecture of policies, institutions, 
incentive regimes, standards, and testing protocols, patent registration and rich financial support and other essentials are provided to entrepreneurs. The importance of providing such an architecture cannot be overstated. I am deeply encouraged by the decision of many of these actors to partner with the OAS in putting on this event. But it is vital that the event not be seen as an end in and of itself, but rather as the beginning of a process of re-engineering that must take place at all levels of government, business, academia. There is one critical area in which such a community of entrepreneurial practice is desperately needed, and that is in the management of risk. It is often said that Caribbean people are risk averse. Some who make this claim point to the billions of dollars that sit idly in our commercial banks. But the reality of the situation is a lot more complicated. Somewhere along the continuum of conceiving an idea and commercializing it, entrepreneurs should have access to technical support to properly assess the totality of risk that's involved, how much of that risk is appropriate and can be absorbed, how much of it can be reduced and how much of it can be transferred. It is impossible to overstate the role of government and its development partners in fostering the development of a flourishing entrepreneurial culture and a competitive MSME sector in Dominica. During this training activity, we will be alert to opportunities whereby the Secretariat for Integral Development, which I have the honor to lead, can assist the government of Dominica to fulfill its axial role in these areas. As we do this, we also seek out ways in which we can regionalize the outcomes and ideas from this week so that the Caribbean single market and economy can achieve its true potential. In closing, I wish to record my sincere appreciation to Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt for not only lending his personal support for this initiative and providing financial assistance but also through his, for his presence at this launch. Prime Minister, thank you. My thanks also to the DIC. I want to especially recognize Kenny Green for his stellar leadership and Lisa Fabian. To Ambassador Francine Barron, thank you so much for helping us to connect the partners from the start. To the permanent secretaries who have been part of this process, thank you. And my special thanks to Sam Raphael of Jungle Bay for his invaluable contribution to this partnership. Our partners at the University of California, Riverside, my own team, Cesar, Mikhail, Ariane, and Gina, Kevin, Johns for accompanying us. My special thanks to all of you. To the participants, all the very best to you. Embrace this opportunity. The days will be long. You will start at nine and five. But I promise you, our experience with this methodology has shown that it's well worth it. Again, my thanks to you, and I am much obliged for your kind attention. Thank you. And at this time, we would like to invite the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica, to address us at this time. First of all, recognize in our presence, the Oyen Omit, Honorable Reginald Austria, our Senior Minister, uh, my wife, Melissa, and Member of Parliament for Rural Central, Honorable Dennis Charles, Member of Parliament for the Super Constituency and our Minister for Tourism. My cabinet colleagues I also want to specially recognize Mrs. Kim Osborne, Professor Cardinal Ward, uh, President of the DIC and Executive Members. I also want to recognize Ambassador Gregoire and Ambassador Barron. Permanent Secretaries, especially the Permanent Secretary and Office of the Prime Minister, Mrs. Henderson, uh, Ms. Lizra Fabian, Mr. Sam Raphael of Jungle Bay, 
and very importantly, the it would be remiss of me not to begin by thanking our various friends and partners from around the world. And by that token, I must take this opportunity to thank our Lord and Savior for helping the citizens of our country to not only get back on our feet after all we have been through, but also make strides again. This year alone, even in the face of a catastrophic COVID-19 global pandemic, Dominicans have managed to make tangible progress in a wide range of sectors and industries. I have lost hand the impact of this government's interventions on the lives of our citizens. This morning's occasion gives me added pride because it is a realization of this government's vision to nurture the citizens of Dominica to become more self-sufficient and self-reliant with the eventual aim of widening the private sector. COVID-19 has not been the only trigger for the situation we face. All over the world, the old adage of a job for life with the pension at the end has become a thing of the past. Multinational, multinationals act in the interests of the markets and their shareholders. And we as we, as we ourselves have seen in Dominica, have acted solely to the benefit of the bottom line. As a government of a small de developing state, there is no more important bottom line than the people of the country. And your government has taken leadership of this event because we believe the future of this country is in our entrepreneurs. Therefore, it has become critical for government to think forward rather than dwelling in the past. Companies that seem to be fixtures of our daily lives may one day be mere footnotes in the winds of change. At the same time, some of the entrepreneurs we are nurturing here may become the household names of this country, the region, and beyond, if they get the right support and if they make the right decisions. It is with this in mind that I am urging you to see this week not just as a workshop and a networking opportunity, but as an important step in your growth. I applaud the OS for being a key partner. I still remember and treasure my initial encounter with Kim Osborne from the Washington office of the OAS. It gives me pride now, just as it did then, to work with a fellow Dominican to bring new opportunities to our country, Dominica. And I want us to applaud the efforts of Kim Osborne. I also want to thank the DIC and its past and new president, Mr. Stephen Lander, for showing genuine and tangible commitment to entrepreneurship. The government values this partnership as it will be down to the benefit of all our citizens. I can say to you without fear of contradiction that the ongoing relationship between the DIC and this government has been solely based on making commodities cheaper to import so they can be resold to the benefit of the importer. This is a limited mission that must be expanded into a better economic mission. How do we manage the growth of a productive economy even when the WTO and globalization have made it increasingly difficult to produce and more easy to import or easier to import? The answer lies in an entrepreneurship-driven economy. We must create local champions who convert our pride in all things Dominican into consumption and long-term success. 
And while this government has done more for entrepreneurs than any other government before us, we have to do more. The primary difficulty for many entrepreneurs is not just knowledge or capital, but support. Imagine a young entrepreneur with an exciting product being forced to sell at a price that doesn't allow them to even meet the standards of fair trade. Why? Because businesses who resell can easily import substitute products at even cheaper pricing for resale. There is no support mechanism in this. This form of capitalism is unfortunately very prevalent in Dominica. And when government gives duty-free to imported items, the beneficiaries often do not pass the cost savings to the consumer and instead build the bottom line. This is a way of the predatory capital, capitalist world. Yet I am often criticized for approaching the question of human development through government assistance. If not government, the question is who? We have, an, we have had importers in Dominica complaining that they need to import fruit and vegetables even while the government creates opportunities through programs and support from partners like the World Bank to increase production. But this is the reality, my dear friends, of modern day life of this world. Again, it is all about the bottom line. The money earned in upselling commodities to locals. And as a government, our priority is the Dominican people. But we have to strike a fine balance between supporting commerce as it is in the name of organizations like the DIC and simultaneously promoting the growth of industry and production. We know that the businesses who operate here are also vital contributors to the employment of our people. And the consumption taxes that we raise, that, that we raise, but we have to look deeper into what we import and how it affects local entrepreneurs. I find it absolutely ridiculous for us to be importing bread into Dominica. When you have a Fuawi and Rubens Bakery making some of the best breads in the whole wide world. <laughs> and we import some little muffins, two muffins in a plastic, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a bag, when we have some of the or the best muffin makers in cottage industries across Dominica. So it is left to us, the consumers, to determine what we buy and what we consume in this country. The power is in your hand, not the government, really. So what, we, what is also apparent is that whilst access to capital is an ongoing need, that the application of knowledge and the building of networks of support is even more critical. Capital can be lost, but knowledge empowers people to find solutions. Networks of support help corporate buyers understand that by offering local products on their shelves, they are also supporting local communities and building families and homes and creating jobs for brothers and sisters. This event is very important, therefore, in allowing Dominican entrepreneurs and our partners to understand that the mission of this Labour Party government is not simply to be here to assist at all times. It is to point our entrepreneurs down the road and to meet them later on as stronger, vibrant, contributing businesses in our country. We will commit to offering support, especially in procurement, where entrepreneurs and entrepreneur-driven initiatives and products can be integrated into government's own supply chain. This is what gives me pride in the role that this Labour Party government has made. And this is why each and every one of you should make the most of these opportunities to expand your chances of success. I would like to thank 
the supporting sponsors for showing unfailing faith in our young entrepreneurs. And this process we are facilitating this morning. I also would like to thank Ambassador Francis Barron for being an important connector between the OAS and government and the DIC. To each of you here today, young Dominicans, young business people, entrepreneurs, I want to implore you to grasp this opportunity with both hands. Make the most of this chance to cultivate your ideas and chart new paths to prosperity for yourselves, your families, your communities, and indeed the whole of Dominica. Be positive. Think positively as we traverse difficult terrain, but terrain that we can certainly successfully traverse upon. May the good Lord bless you, the young people of Dominica, young entrepreneurs. I have the greatest admiration, admiration for you, for your commitment to your country and your commitment to each other. You are really and truly national heroes of our country. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you, Honorable Rinklos Harris, for your sound words and your inspiration. At this time, we'll listen to the keynote presentation from Professor Cardinal Ward of MIT. This will be a virtual presentation. Are you in the paper today? Yes, I have to go. Professor Ward. Oh, oh, wonderful. Thank you, Cesar. Please just go, go ahead. We have you on the screen in the room. We have one wonderful time here today. Okay. Let me. Try to share my screen. I couldn't hear any of the prime minister's remarks, so I wasn't sure when I was going to be on. 
Um, is my screen visible? Yes, we can see it. Let me see if I can make it a maybe a little bit bigger. Don't know if this is going to work, but I'll try. I'll find my cursor here. Did that do anything? Yes, it's full screen. This is full screen. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, good morning to all. Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Scarrett, members of the cabinet, permanent secretaries, members, of course, of the Dominica Association of Industry of and commerce, and of course, to my dear friends who are members of the OAS delegation, and people of Dominica, ladies and gentlemen, it's indeed my pleasure and honor to be able to speak to you this morning on my topic, which is listed on the screen here. It's a model for economic diversification and development of the Caribbean. And I know the, the workshop is focused on Dominica and, and I will try to make my remarks whenever possible as pertinent to Dominica as possible. But a lot of the problems of Dominica are problems of the region. And I believe in regional integration and nations of the Caribbean helping one another. So I see it as our problem. In case you don't know, I'm Bajan, I was born in Barbados. I, I wear many hats, as you can see on the screen. The, on the top left, it says CATSI, that's the Caribbean Diaspora for Science, Technology, and Innovation. It's got offices in Boston, London, Atlanta. Those are the main ones, and a few others, as you'll see if, in a few minutes on the screen. But unfortunately, I have to wear many hats because people ask me to do things all the time. So I'm the president of that organization. All the way on the right is the Caribbean Science Foundation. That organization is based in Barbados. I will tell you a little bit about that in a few minutes. But I'm the interim executive director, as you can see at the bottom of your screen. None of these organizations uh, pay any money. They have very few employees. They have a lot of volunteers. So that's my way of giving back to the Caribbean. The job that pays is my MIT job. I'm a professor of electrical engineering at MIT. And I've been there for a very, very long time. So as you can see down on the bottom of the screen, the mantra for CSF, it says, blooming the next generation of Caribbean science and engineering leaders. And that's what we are all about because the economic development of the Caribbean, we believe should have pillars based in science and technology. And so I'm gonna be talking a lot about science and technology and science and engineering today. So, so bear with me as I focus on that particular sector of the economy. The objectives of the workshop are clear. I'm not going to repeat them all, but the first five, which you've heard a little bit about already, are probably the five I'll cover parts of during my presentation. So let's move on because I think that was shared with all of you. The Caribbean has lots of problems as you've already heard. Most countries are in debt. There's poverty is rampant. Not a lot of resources in some of the countries, very food and energy deficient, small populations. We're not the most efficient people in terms of uh, our productivity at work. Limited expertise in the region, in part because a lot of the expertise leave and I can blame myself for leaving and I'm, I'm living outside of the region, although I I'm in Barbados prior, prior to COVID six times a year, but now uh, I'm homebound in Boston. The, most of our economies are service economies. We rely on tourism and now we see the 
dangers of having just one horse in the race. And I'm gonna talk a lot today about diversifying the economy. Uh, venture capital base is important for finding capital to get entrepreneurs and their companies off the ground. We really don't have much of that at all. Um, there are a few high technology jobs in the region and there are a few jobs because the people who could start those jobs live overseas and they don't come back to start the jobs. It's a chicken and egg situation. And some of them would like to come back to the region to work and live, but they're gonna to have to come back and start those jobs. We are often trapped in our sovereignty. The, every little country is as a king or a queen and we don't work well together. So that needs to change over time. The loss of small governments. So when the EU wants to help us or, 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 or the USAID or any of the international organizations to help the Caribbean, they have to go through almost all the countries, although there is CARICOM, which would be the one-stop shop, but it's difficult for us to, to work with others. And we've been dominated by colonial powers for, for a long time. And some of them have established monopolies in our countries. And there are pluses and minuses to that. And our culture is of course, um, very tied to our history. Um, Caribbean is in debt. I'm not gonna read this, but uh, Nimat Shafiq uh, from the IMF, and this is from 2003. I have underlined the most important things, the Caribbean, most heavily indebted region in the world at that time, I don't think it's changed. And the average debt levels are more than twice the median for larger Latin American countries. So the problems are well understood. And the question is, what are the solutions? I'm claiming today that I don't have the magic bullet, but there are things that we can do. We have scientists and engineers, and we believe that science and technology can be harnessed for creating technology-based companies with high paying jobs to help with the economic diversification of Dominica and the region. And I think we need to look to the next generation. We need to promote more science and technology in our young people, beginning with STEM education. But we can't stop just with STEM education. To groom entrepreneurs, you require a lot more than just STEM education as you've already heard. So, the Caribbean Science Foundation, I said I'm a member of and leader of, of CADS, which is up on the top here, and the Caribbean Science Foundation in the middle. We in the diaspora started to worry about how what we could do to help the Caribbean. And um, a bunch of us got together, led by Professor Haram Kasun in Trinidad, and we started the Caribbean Diaspora for Science, Technology, and Innovation. Nobody stepped forward to lead it, and so I ended up carrying the bulk of the work. My wife helps me a lot, but I told you about the branches that it has. Some of the branches there are not doing very much. There's not much going on in Canada. And there is some going on in Silicon Valley, mostly support for some of our programs. The New York, the US, uh, New York, New Jersey over on the right never took off. But the other branches in the Southeast, that's US Southeast, that's uh, Atlanta. The other branches on the right are are carrying, on the left, sorry, are carrying most of the weight. So the organization decided that it should set up the Caribbean Science Foundation, which is located on the Cape campus of the University of the West Indies in Barbados. And nobody wanted to lead that. So I ended up leading that also because I suggested it and when you open your mouth, you have to also follow up and do the work. And its support, comes from NGOs, individuals, diaspora governments, regional governments, although we don't get much from the regional governments. But th these organizations were set up to help develop a culture of science and engineering in the region. And to, as I said before, to tr try to create more jobs. And one of the things that we have to do to do that is to bolster our STEM education programs. And you'll see down on the bottom, the education programs are in the bottom center. There's SPICE, which I'll talk a little bit about. We do robotics camps. We have coding workshops. We, we used to do the Sachikor Visionaries Challenge, that's SVC, and we've done STEM teacher training workshops. In fact, we did one in Dominica several years ago. Um, we're a body of scientists and 
and, and engineers and, and, and business professionals. So whenever regional governments ask us for help, we play advisory roles over on the right. But today's um, discussion is focused a lot on entrepreneurs, which is over on the left. And so there's so the most important parts of the Caribbean Science Foundation programs, they're not just the educational programs in the bottom center, but also trying to help mentor entrepreneurs and, and, and in some cases provide seed funding. So with that, um, let me move on. That gives you a rough idea of, of who I am and perhaps what I do. I'm not gonna talk about my MIT research today. There's no time for that. So you'll have to skip over that. So the mission is, has been stated already. We want to help diversify the Caribbean economies so that the next time there's a pandemic, we won't be relying only on tourism. And um, the goals have, have been stated already. This is how we think our mission can be accomplished. Starting off with STEM-based education on the bottom left and putting a lot of emphasis on science and engineering. I like science and engineering more than science and technology because engineers create jobs. A lot, lot more jobs than say doctors and lawyers. And we don't have enough engineers. We have scientists, yes, but we don't have enough engineers of the type that create the kinds of jobs that I think we need for our economic development. But anyway, um, we, we need to, to continue up this cycle I have here. And, and so, so the entrepreneurship comes next, the so science and technology-based entrepreneurship. We have to cultivate and groom our people to become better and more efficient and more profitable engineers and create new, new technology companies. And the bottom line is Dominica and the rest of the Caribbean has got to export more than it imports. We got to bring in foreign exchange. We do that right now with tourism. So I still have that over on the side and we should not get rid of tourism, but we should complement tourism with these technology industries that can bring in additional foreign exchange. And I think that is the way that we would get the economic growth and diversification that we need. So we're relying on, on STEM to do this. So a little bit more about the CSF. We started in 2010, and you can see a lot of our programs here. The, our flagship program is called SPICE, it's at the top. Student Program for Innovation in Science and Engineering. And several Dominican students continued that, that program. And in fact, we had the largest contingent from Dominica this past summer. Satricor Visionaries Challenge. We worked with Satricor. We were the architects of the program with regard to how the challenge was run and we helped to provide the mentors and the judges for that. That has stopped, as you can see. We have a student internship program where we get students into companies so they can see into technology companies so we can see, they can see how technology companies run. Some of those companies are in the Caribbean, some are here in the US, in the UK, and in Canada. Um, We've run STEM teacher training workshops. I don't have time to talk about that today, but uh, those were for primary school teachers to teach them how to teach science to youngsters. So it was a training program. The Barbados Junior Robotics Camp is still going on. We had 66 Bayesians in the camps uh, in 2019. We had to cancel 2020. And there are four levels of camps there in Barbados. The upper level campers have to build their own robots. So they come at 10 and they're as old as 18. And the computer coding workshops are going on every Saturday right now in Barbados and in Dominica, in fact. And they're run virtually in Dominica. We advertise as much as we could in Dominica. I think we only have maybe 12 to 13 or 14 students, which is unfortunate. We were hoping to have a lot more. And then there are some entrepreneurship programs there, which were EU funded, or is Alcunet, Euronet, and, and Carib Venture is on our website. So you can check that out later. Um, let's see. The computer coding workshops, let me see, did I skip a slide? 
No, I didn't. The computer coding workshops that are going on in, in, in Dominica and in Barbados presently, you know, we were trying to help train a workforce of the future because we think that coding would be as essential a skill to have for many entry level positions as word processing and spreadsheets are today. And, and I think um, we can build software companies in the region much more easily than we can build manufacturing companies. And, and that's another reason why software makes a lot of sense for, for the region. Our people are the smartest people in other parts of the world. So there's absolutely no reason why a lot more jobs from the developed world could not be outsourced to Dominica and other Caribbean countries. And some of that's already happening, but more of it needs to happen. The workshop this, that we're running in Dominica right now, and we ran it also earlier this year, we, we, we ran it from January to March, and we were using the Newtown Primary School as our, as our venue, but now we're totally virtual. But the level one workshop is basically, basically on HTML, CSS, JavaScript, the tools that are used to make uh, websites. And we've done a little bit of mobile apps as well. Level two is where we can really make a difference in Dominica, huge difference. Because we would like to do Python in Dominica and, and Python is one of the most popular languages today. It's used for machine learning, AI, and very powerful language, very easy to learn, lots of libraries, very flexible. So we are, we're not doing level two right now, but we will be trying to find funding to make level two a possibility uh, later on. Um, I'm spending too much time on the computer coding workshops, but uh, the, the benefits are obvious and you can read the slide if you like, but the longer term, it's all about um, innovation, creating jobs, jobs that you can do right away, jobs that don't require a lot of upfront capital, getting the technology workplace in force, workforce in place and finding more self-employment opportunities for our youth and the like. And for those who want to go on to university, of course, it helps them by having another program and language under their belt if they haven't had one before. But longer term, you see the very last bullet. I truly believe that the next Google has a chance of coming up the Caribbean. And we need to get into the race. And those who have never had any programming before, they can get into the race by joining these work. So that's one of the contributions the Caribbean Science Foundation is making every Saturday morning from nine to 12 in Dominica. The SPICE program has been going on since 2012. This is for the, the Caribbean students who are already interested in science and technology. We don't have to convince them that they want to go into science and technology. They're already convinced. They are 16 to 18 years old. It says 17, and we've increased the age limit a little bit. And they want to go to their dream university, wherever it is, and do science and engineering. It's a boot camp. Normally, the students would have come to us to the Cayfield campus in Barbados be for, for, for five weeks. We pay all their expenses. We, they live in the dorms. We have to pay their instructors and we have to feed them. We don't buy them clothes, although we would if we had to, but most of them don't need any more clothes. And we ask the parents to put them into our stewardship for five weeks, but we teach them two levels of calculus. There are two levels of physics, biochemistry, entrepreneurship, Caribbean unity. That's very important to me and, and, and I think to the region. On there, fortunately. And um, the robotics camp, well, my colleagues at MIT have helped out and we do these underwater robots. And of course we're doing electronics. And this year, because SPICE had to be held virtually, we, we couldn't do the underwater robot. So we shipped the electronics parts. They were all microprocessor control systems to the students in the various countries around the region. And I already mentioned that we have these career seminars that very successful professionals come in and talk to the students. And we have workshops and time management and all the US university college applications and Canadian college applications and UK college applications, right? But the workshop, these subjects and these subjects, rote learning is discouraged. We don't focus on grades in SPICE. What we do is we focus on critical, logical and analytical thinking. 
the students are encouraged to help one another and we test them on the fundamentals. We give lots of quizzes. So even though the grades might not be the main thing, we'd have to get the feedback on how they're doing. And, to, and, and, and that feedback helps us to be better teachers. But a lot of it is focused on the, how to think and how to be logical and analytical rather than relying on your memory to get A's and B's and great grades. The program has been a tremendous success, actually. Here are these labs that we do when we're in person. We have biochemistry labs, electronics labs, and so on, robotics. So I'll just skip over this slide. These are the numbers for the region for SPICE. Look at Dominica. Dominica over here, you can see that we have 15 students have gone through Dominica. And this year, Dominica in 2020 had the largest contingent of students. That made up for the ones that we lost because of the hurricanes in Dominica. We had zero in the last two years. So I think Dominica is back on par with the others. And these were six brilliant students from Dominica. Um, in fact, um, one of the prior students from the SPICE program is now at MIT as a, she just finished her first year. She, so she's a second year student now. Um, and in fact, she's working with me on research on artificial neural networks. So I'm very proud and pleased to, to have her be one of my research students. But you can see all the countries have participated are here. Um, and there were 14 of these students out of the 169 students have gone through SPICE. And 14 have, have been enrolled at one point or another, MIT, three at Harvard, three at Stanford, and all these other country uh, universities have, have had one or two. Okay, so that's the SPICE program. That's one of the things that we do in order to groom the next general leaders in science and engineering for the region. So for many years, I've been, it's, it's too bad because I've been at this since 1998. I've been talking to leaders in the region about diversifying the economies. And I've proposed many ideas that really never got taken up, but I continue to do it. And the government of Barbados has asked me about, about three years ago to, to, they had a grant from the EU to look at how we could create more jobs based on science and technology in Barbados. And so I wrote a paper, a report, for them, it was a consultancy I had, and it's on the Caribbean website, Caribbean Science Foundation website, which is caribbeanscience.org. And all of the publications are, are indeed under, I think it's under publications, caribbeanscience.org slash publications. But one of the models that was proposed, which I think is relevant to Dominica and to all of the countries is shown here on how to create more jobs. I think we have to rely on the diaspora for help. That's becoming more and more obvious. And we have a, most, and that's because most of our scientists and engineers, they live abroad. And Dominica in particular, needs to find a way to attract more technology companies to, the, to, the, to Dominica. I think there's an attitude in Dominica, which I noticed, which is that most people want to get trained and leave. And I think we, we need, and, and that's good for the individual, but I think to help the majority of people in Dominica, we have to, some of those people will need to come back at some point in time, but we also need to be importing talent. And what better talent than Dominicans, or since I'm a regionalist, people from other Caribbean countries say coming back to Dominica to start companies. And I'm not sure what exists in Dominica in terms of recruiting companies to Dominica, but I'm sure there's something. In Barbados, there are a lot of com foreign companies that come in, but they're all in financial services and Barbados itself has not learned how to attract technology companies. Intel was in Barbados a long time ago. They're no longer there. But that's the kind of company that we need to attract. We need to attract not just one, but several of them. And some of our graduates that are abroad, right, that from the, you know, they're living in the diaspora, some of them might want to come back and work for these companies. And what we hope is that what happened in Silicon Valley would happen in the region and that people will leave these companies and go start their own 
And then they start their companies. And of course, people will leave their companies and start other companies. So we'd like to see this mushroom in effect take place. And in fact, some of the people of our people abroad should come back and start their own companies. They don't have to come back to the foreign companies that we've attracted. They can come back and start their own companies. But we hope that we can grow this model. It has an exponential growth. It's like a virus. <laughs> and you know, in, in 20 years, we could have lots of technology companies in the region. So the other half looks the same way. These are local companies that um, can be formed. They don't have necessarily to come from overseas. We can grow local companies, right? And people can come back from overseas and, and do the same thing in local companies. But the idea is that down at the bottom here, we'd like lots of companies. So I've written extensively about this model. It's in some of the papers and reports I've written, which are on the website I just mentioned. It's the first, the first two papers there describe this model and lots of other things that I have in mind. The other thing I've been encouraging governments to do is to adopt a model like this. I have a name for it, but you can call it anything you want. I've called it a small business innovation and research and development model, SBIRD, right? This was a model that's copied from the United States. Um, I know the Scot Scotland had a, a model that's very, very popular that I think Barbados is looking at, but they're all trying to do the same thing. They're trying to get entrepreneurship started, especially technology entrepreneurship, where the government provides some seed funds, you know, and in a phase one program, which might only last six months, this was meant for Barbados. This is what I proposed, maybe 100K Barbados dollars to, to several companies to show feasibility of a product or service. Now, some of these companies will go forward to phase two here. This is a phase two role here where they might get additional government support, maybe up to half a million dollars if you can afford it to take the product to the next step where it can indeed go off and have large sales into finally into global markets or even local markets. But several of these companies are going to fail. Company A failed and company E failed. Some of them are going to fail. Some of them without any more government help might be able to on their own go out and get angel and, and venture capital funding or even corporate capital. I call that phase three. Professor so we'll to global markets. Professor Ward, sorry to in interrupt. We need to, to wrap up in about a minute if you can help us okay, with that. I'll do that. Prime Minister would, would need to depart. Too. Yes. Okay. And 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 uh, similarly the idea is to get outside money from outside of Dominica to, to, to push companies in the global market. But this will bring in a foreign exchange that we need, and that's the, the payback here, so that the program could be self-sufficient later on. So let me speed up here. Um, I've proposed a shared research national laboratory for the Caribbean, where our young scientists and engineers and those who come back from abroad can have some of the facilities that they need to get technology companies off the grounds. And this is a five-story building. No one government wants to do this. This should be shared, but I think the international community can help us build this. And I say what's on the various floors, but it's all technology equipment in biology and electronics and so on, and optics and so on. There's some administrative offices and classrooms. That's a long story and requires a huge commitment. You've heard some traits about entrepreneurs. So many of you want to be entrepreneurs. These are some of the traits. Not everybody has all these traits. You've already heard some of these, but um, they're all important, right? The greed factor sometimes is looked on negatively, but that's all often a driver for entrepreneurs. But they're well informed, they're innovative, they're imaginative, they think outside the box, and they're willing to wait for a return on their time and investment, the deferred gratification. knowledge acquisition, ability to recognize and seize opportunities. A lot of us don't have this. And that's what often distinguishes who, who takes the great idea and, and, and takes it. A lot of us, the opportunities come by and we don't see them until after someone has seized those opportunities and, and, um, and benefited from them. 
but planning and getting good advice and being in the right place at the right time and being able to implement is key. So let me stop there and with my positive thinking that indeed the next Google can start in Dominica, it can start anywhere in the Caribbean. If you want to find me, those are my coordinates. And I would say check out the Caribbean Science Foundation website and a lot of what I've said and more can be found at the publications link at caribbeanscience.org. So thanks once again for, for inviting me. It was a pleasure and I hope that this work will be very, very successful to motivate the people in Dominica to reach higher heights and to help change the direction of the economy there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Ward. We appreciate the presentation and your collaboration, and we look forward to continue working with you through the program and, and in future endeavors. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Ward. At this time, we would like to recognize and express our sincere gratitude to the Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, for your vision and inspirational words this morning. We'd also like to thank the Honorable Dennis Charles, the Minister for Tourism, International Transport, Maritime Initiatives, and the Parliament Representative for the Sufre Constituency for your warm welcome to the Tourism Hub, you say, of Dominica, Slice of Paradise. We also want to thank Professor Cardinal Ward of MIT for his insights into what has been happening in the Caribbean and how we can learn some lessons in Dominica. Mrs. Kim Osborne for your remarks and steadfast partnership in this initiative. Mr. Stephen Lander for your remarks and leadership at DAIC. The teams who have worked behind the scenes of our partner organizations, the Office of the Prime Minister and the Ministry responsible for entrepreneurship and innovation, the Organization of American States, and the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce. We'd like to thank our cabinet ministers, also the Honorable Melissa Skerritt, the Honorable Reginald Austrey, also the permanent secretaries of the government and special mention of P.S. Missy Henderson and P.S. Esther Thomas. We'd also like to thank the board of directors of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce for your partnership and for being present today. Also special invited guests, Ambassador Felix Gregoire. We want to make special mention of two of the pioneers of this initiative, Ambassador Francine Barron and Mr. Kenneth Green. Thank you for your foresight and your leadership also in this initiative. We must recognize our valuable sponsors to making this initiative a success, our hub a success, and this opening on-site workshop a true success. We'd like to recognize the Jungle Bay Eco Resort, Mr. Sam Raphael, and the supportive team of Jungle Bay. We must also recognize Saul EC Limited, Dominica, for the sponsorship and partnership, CIBC, First Caribbean International Bank, and FSI Creative for supporting this initiative. We must also recognize our entrepreneurs, because without our entrepreneurs here today, this would not be possible. So thank you for being committed to this initiative in order that we can grow our economy of Dominica and our entrepreneurship culture. We must also recognize the media partners who are here today to share what's happening here at Jungle Bay and to everyone who made this official launch of the Dominica Entrepreneurship and Innovation Hub of Success. We thank you greatly. We also wish to invite you to join us at our closing ceremony on Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. where we learn of the highlights of this initiative and we see the successful completion of the, with the certification ceremony of the entrepreneurs who have gone through this week's on-site workshop. We thank you all for tuning in and being present today and we wish you a pleasant day. for our special invited guests and those who are present. After we are through, we also invite you to have refreshments as we've made it available for you. Thank you everyone. 
and God's blessings to have a, a wonderful day. We'll stand.